How's it going guys, Vapa here and welcome to an Apple Mac mini first impression slash setup sort of video. This was a very interesting uh, product that I wanted to review because it comes with the M1 chipset, Apple Silicon, and that got me really excited even from a Windows perspective. So I've been a Windows PC guy for pretty much my whole life, but I wanted to try this out because one, it was kind of affordable, it fell in my budget so I thought I'd get it, and number two, I wanted to see how far I could push the M1 when it comes to real world performance. We've seen benchmarks and this video is gonna include a few as well, but with that being said, let's get into the unboxing experience and then my first impressions. Okay, so a quick rundown of everything that comes inside the box. First up is the Mac Mini, which honestly is a bit bigger than I thought, but it's my first time ever seeing the machine, so I'd say that was expected. Also, the size of the Mac Mini or the box in general is about two iPhone 12 Pro Max boxes put side by side, and I hope that's sort of relatable. Thankfully, you do get a power cord and a power adapter with the Mac mini out of the box. This is something that the iPhone 12 series does not ship with. You don't get an adapter, but here you're set as soon as you unbox the device, which is absolutely amazing. And you also get the Apple sticker, which everyone just seems to love. Now, there are other things in the box like um, documentation, all of that boring stuff. I'm gonna brush over that because I don't really wanna cover that. But something that I did find interesting was that all the ports of the Mac mini were covered with this sticker. I think that's for protection, but the sticker basically peels off and you're left with all the IO that comes with the Mac mini. Now, the Mac mini's IO is actually something that I bought it because uh, the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro doesn't seem to have the same IO selection. And for me, IO is a big part of what I do in my daily workflow. And I thought the Mac mini just made sense. So on the Mac mini, you find a nice and robust selection. You get two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, two type A USB ports, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well. You also get an ethernet port, but this time it's not the 10 gigabit variant that was supported initially on previous Mac minis. And I think the reversal in this step is because the M1 chipset that's inside the Mac mini of late 2020 might not be able to support 10 gigabit transfer speeds and that's just something to keep in mind. It doesn't really bother me too much but for anyone who's looking for that feature you won't get it with the late 2020 Mac mini. Of course to round up you get the actual power connector as well as the power button but I feel like the power button should have been on the front rather than the back for accessibility reasons but of course that's just something you'll have to live with. But enough about the hardware, let's talk a bit about the setup process. The setup of the Mac mini was extremely simple, quite a breeze actually, and I think the IO selection on the Mac really helped with that, so I could just pull all the connections out of my laptop, plug it into my Mac mini, and I was set to go. Uh, Mac OS really helped me get started, so things like connecting my peripherals, then connecting to Wi-Fi, and also prompted me to transfer any data that I would have from a Windows PC, or maybe a Mac device that I've used in the past, so all of that was good, and I think all all of these steps are primitive for those people who use Mac OS on a general basis. For me, it was new and I thought I'd document it for anyone who's in my shoes and wants to get set up on a Mac. Oh, and I also did the right thing for Siri because that's just annoying. Just like that though, I was running Mac OS Big Sur on the Mac mini on my desktop monitor with the M1 chip and that was an exciting feeling. Now, I just wanna address off the bat, this is the Mac mini with the base variant specification. So it's got eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. I wanted to see how well optimized the base variant is. I didn't wanna splash out on the high-end version just yet because the M1 brings a lot of optimization to the table and I thought I'd test it out. Now, as far as the usable storage is concerned, the SSD, while it states 256 gigabytes, only 217 gigabytes of that is user sort of accessible. So that's something to keep in mind if storage is a big priority to you. And this time the Mac mini also doesn't allow you to switch anything inside. So what you get is what you get. You don't have expandable memory or expandable storage. So you have to keep that in mind as well. In usual videos, I'd sort of end at this juncture, but I thought I'd set up the Mac mini a bit more. So the first thing I did was to set up Chrome. Now I'm not a Safari guy, so I went ahead and downloaded Chrome and that's where we saw the first glimpse of the M1 chipset in action. The Mac mini actually prompted me to download Rosetta and install it, which basically allows you to run Intel based programs on the M1 chipset. So while the M1 chipset is very optimized, certain applications may not be optimized for it. And Rosetta basically allows you to have sort of this leeway or this junction in the middle, which basically optimizes any app to run on the M1 chip 
with slight performance decrements. Now, I haven't experienced any of those, but um, for those people who wanna continue their workflow and wanna switch to the M1, this is a great step from Apple. I don't know how this is gonna work in the long run or for intensive programs, but for the time being, it's working just fine. I downloaded things like Audacity, OBS Studio, and things ran very smoothly. And in fact, the first time it asked me to download and install Rosetta, every other time I downloaded another application, it didn't prompt me to do so. So I think what it's doing is it's working in the background and sort of optimizing the app by itself. And you don't have to face that prompt after the initial installation, which is absolutely awesome. It's only fair that I include some benchmark scores in this video as well. So here's a Geekbench 4 as well as a Geekbench 5 score. I've got to say it absolutely obliterates the competition, but I want to also point out this is a benchmark. I really want to see the real world performance. And for that reason, I've got a separate video dedicated to some real world tests, which you can leave down in the comments if you want specifics. But I've got some in mind that I'm definitely going to try on the Mac Mini. I've got Adobe's Premiere uh, and Adobe's Photoshop installed as well. Now, these aren't native M1 versions just yet because the M1 versions are coming out very soon. These are the Intel versions and the Mac Mini actually prompted me to download these. But yeah, I want to really test test this out from a creative standpoint and then give you guys my thoughts and opinions as well as my full review in a couple of weeks time. So thanks for watching this one. Let me know if you want to see anything specific down in the comments. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, a like rating would be appreciated and subscribe for more videos coming very shortly. This was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.